You are now listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Welcome to Feeding Off Each Other, a weekly podcast where we feed off the talent, humor, knowledge, and awesome stories of our guests and each other. I'm Matt Dennison, and I am joined by beer pong champion David Wiggins. No! <laughs> and I, like- I am joined by beer pong champion's partner, mm. Jason Lucas. This is true. Basic, we, basic we had our first uh, party, like a, house, a office warming party on Friday, and David just sunk ping pong balls one after the other nonstop. I lost a couple of games. Everybody was complimenting you. They got Were very they? excited at your beer pong. Oh, talent. yeah. Dave's really good at beer pong. Oh, thank you. I feel like every time we have a party and you perform really well at beer pong, I think it's just a fluke. He's not really that good. Mm. And then every party, you, you kill it. It's, you know, 10,000 hours sort of thing. You just uh, got to put the time in. You should, they, they need to give you a Red Bull hat or something. For new, beer new pong? Red Bull category, athlete category, maybe. No, people that are actually good at beer pong, it's like they, never, they don't miss a shot. It's insane. Yeah. Mm. Okay, guys, we, we, uh, we're we a bit time crunched today, mm-hmm. so we got to get right into our guest intro. Mm-hmm. Jason, yeah, take it away. Yeah, I got it. Our guest today hails from the mountain biking mecca of Squamish, BC, and has been on a very steady upward trajectory as a pro downhill racer since he started riding bikes at just two years of age. His rise to glory has been well documented starting all the way back in 2010 with a viral video of him shredding on a run bike on his way to kindergarten when he was six years old. Fast forward to now and he has stood on more podiums than I can count. He has a downhill world champs title to his name and a win at the gnarliest race in the world, Red Bull Hardline. Nowadays, our guest is a very well-traveled young man and is, in fact, hopping on a plane after joining us here on our stupid, humble little podcast. Ladies and gentle chothers, please welcome Jackson Goldstone. Yo, what's up, guys? Thank you, Jackson, for making it. Oh, my goodness. We finally made it. Yeah, <laughs> finally. But, uh, you know, I had to cancel cancel once, but made it now. And, uh, yeah, just got a little bit of time before hopping on my flight to France uh, later this afternoon. Yeah, so what's the situation with this bike? Yeah, so it's a bit of a bit of an interesting one. Um, a few weeks ago when I was flying home from Mexico for that uh, urban downhill race, um, you know, went to check in my bike. Everything was normal, and they were like, sorry, we can't check in your bike. There's no room. Um, so they literally just didn't help me at all. Had to, you know, leave it at this hotel and had the Red Bull athlete manager from Mexico pick it up and then ship it. But, um, you know, I think it just took a bit longer than expected to get it shipped back from uh from Mexico and it was supposed to arrive yesterday and then obviously didn't arrive yesterday and the the tracking number says it's going to show up between nine and one and and my flight leaves at four so um yeah we're kind of you know got my looking at my phone and and uh seeing if it's uh got any updates on that but I kind of need it to go to France so so could be could be going on the flight, could be not going on the flight. We'll see what happens. Jeez. What's in France? Um, so France is actually a pretty interesting one. I don't actually know everything about it that's happening, but it's pretty much just a test event that Discovery is putting on um, just to kind of, you know, see some faces that are running the event now instead of Red Bull. And uh, um, I think they're going to be changing, you know, some of the new signings and stuff like that. So just to kind of get used to the new... Um, you know, layout, not the new format. They're not going to be using the new semis and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, just to kind of go and, and ride. It's ride. been a while since I've been on the downhill bike because it's been missing as well. So I'm going to go and just use it as a big training block. Do you, you have an air tag in your, in your bag? I, have, I had one in my trail bike, but not my downhill bike. Oh. So that was pretty annoying. What's, so wait, where in France? Uh, it's in Lourdes. Oh, so okay, okay. Yeah. Very interesting. So it's, yeah, it's only, we're only going to be in Lourdes for like four days, I'm pretty sure. And then I'm actually going to Portugal for a few days after Mm. for uh, just Fox suspension testing. In Lusa? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I don't know if you've probably seen a whole bunch of like the big factory teams kind of floating in and out week by week, so... Yeah. You are all over the place, (laughs) like in terms of, (laughs) you know, uh, flying. (laughs) Yeah, I've had, I've had three weeks at home this year this year so far this year so far yeah wow how's it feel do you like it you like traveling i mean yeah at this point in your life 
Yeah. It's great. Love it. Um, you know, it does, it does feel nice to be home. Just being a lot more, you know, comfortable being, you know, knowing where everything is, knowing, you know, you have good trails and you're not like, you know, you got a good gym and stuff like that. I feel like it's, it's nice to be home for training just because it makes everything so much easier. You don't have to go and find stuff, but, um, you know, it's still really cool to see other places in the world. Is Red Bull setting you up in uh, business class, first class? Are you in the back of the plane? What's the situation? The bathroom. Um, we see your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> um, thankfully, I mean, I've got a pretty good amount of status now. I, I don't think I'm quite gold yet, but I do get, um, you know, I think I get premium economy sometimes. So not quite, not quite business levels yet, but. Yeah. Just, you sometimes get the, those seats where it's like the emergency row. Yeah. 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 The That's emergency sweet. row. That's and living. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I get lounge. I don't know. It's weird. It's like I, I 50, 50 chance. And if I get the lounge or not, but I think I'm uh, I should hit a pretty high status this year with, you know, how my layout's looking like I've got a lot of flights coming up. So hopefully I'll, I'll get that. Jeez. How long is this flight to France? <laughs> I'm not actually sure. I think it's... Um, Let's check the manager in the corner. <laughs> How long is the flight I want to say it's like, you know, 10, 10 hours. I think I go 10 hours to Frankfurt and then like two hours to to Toulouse Airport. Frankfurt is a workout, eh? A big yeah. airport. It's, it's the yeah, worst I'm going to get my steps in there for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, to get to one gate from the other, it's like half an hour. Yeah. Yeah, so what's how do you prepare for a long flight? Do you are you are you like a creature of comforts? Are you simple? Can you sleep on any plane in any position, or are you uh you know do you bring all your, all your specific things to stay uh, cozy on the plane? Um, I'm actually pretty good at sleeping on planes, thankfully. Um, you know I, I got a little neck pillow that I brought with me this time, but usually, you know I can pretty much pass out anywhere, and and thankfully I obviously get to choose pretty much what seat I get in all, any time. So I always choose window, get the wall to lean against, and then I can usually pass out right away. Um, you know, sometimes take a melatonin, a little, uh, little gummy or pill if uh, if I really need. But, um, yeah, I usually can get away with nothing. Anybody sit beside you and uh, have, like, a starstruck moment or look at your hat and wonder who you are and get into conversations? I've actually not, – not as many as you'd think. I mean, I have had some people, like – see my Red Bull hat and then ask questions and like not who know who I am, but just see the Red Bull hat. And, um, but yeah, n I haven't actually properly sat next to someone that's been like, Oh, like I know exactly who you are. But you should come up with a fake story next time. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. There's a uh, one time my aunt was flying somewhere. This might be a terrible story, but we're going to go into it. <laughs> let's, let's I'm so and excited. She was the person <laughs> that uh, spoke to the athlete. Right. And uh, so she's like, yeah, I was on this flight and a very nice young fellow with a mountain bike shirt was next to me. And uh, so I asked him, um, do you know my son or my nephew, Jason? And I was like, oh, God, no. <laughs> Why did you do that? And I was like, who was it? She was like, uh, and this was back a few years ago now. And she's like, I think his name was Logan, like Logan Pete or something. I was like, no way. oh, my God. <laughs> so I like had to message him and be like, hey, I'm really sorry. It was like <laughs> at that age where I was really embarrassed. And yeah. you could just there was some crossfire there. But, huh? Very but he did know you. He did know me. Yeah. So your aunt was crushing it. Yeah, but I think it was still one of those like where he's like, "Oh, great, we're like locked into this." Yeah. Maybe, or he's also just a very nice human, yeah, and it maybe. was fine. So you had a health complication recently. Yeah. Something inside your body blew up. Mm hmm. That was a bit of a bit of a stitch up that one. Um. Yeah. So it was kind of just came out of nowhere. I had this really bad stomach problem from from Mexico. Don't know if I caught a bug or something and then was on some pretty gnarly meds from that. And then, you know, finally felt like the the full stomach pain calmed down from that. And then it was like, oh, like, why is the pain just moved right into this little corner? And, um, yeah, I went to the hospital and they said my appendix was bursted. So I was like expecting to go, you know, into Lionsgate. They told me to be there right right as it opened, like as or as the doctors kind of came in at 7 a.m. And so, you know, I was there at 7 I was expecting you to get surgery and then, uh, you know, be out of there and be fine in a few days because that's what the Squamish doctor told me. But, um, yeah, it didn't go as easy as that. You know, it took a very long time to get all my scans and finally had an answer by, like, 4 o'clock that I was going to be staying in Lionsgate for, you know, four nights. Um, so four wasn't – yeah, it's pretty, it pretty crazy. But, you know, it wasn't packed or anything. Like, had not, had, you know, just – 
just me. So, man, that um, would have been a good opportunity to bring the mics and do the pod. Could have done that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, time. I was yeah. I was in a bit of, <laughs> bit of a different state than I am in now. It was oh, pretty painful. I don't know if in the, you know, Jackson I was, Goldstone tells all <laughs> <laughs> on the pain meds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's just it, it wasn't actually like crazy painful, but um, you know, it's just like walking around and moving and that kind of stuff was was hard but like if i was just like you know sat there in the bed i could i was totally fine so it wasn't painful i uh, nowadays sorry it was it wasn't what? painful until they gave me the the and like the antibiotics and stuff before oh. that it was pretty painful oh okay okay because nowadays i'm walking around you know i feel a little feel a little bubble there feel a little pain there <laughs> and i think my appendix is bursting this is it Matt it's time in the morning it's time <laughs> <laughs> yeah often in the morning uh what are the signs of a burst appendix like do you, now you know you have some experience under your belt. I think I think you'll know when it's bursted because you'll be sprinting to the hospital. Okay. So it's it's like I, I, what I've heard is that if you push down, kind of in that area, it doesn't hurt to push down. But when you let go, that's apparently when it really hurts. So that's how you know it's like you need to go go to the hospital, I guess. But um, yeah, I didn't really have that. It was kind of different for me. It was just painful when you pushed it in. I don't know if it was what it was different or whatever, but um, I had to get like a, not a, not a operation, but they did a little bit of a thing where they just, you know, froze my stomach and stuck a needle in and then like pulled out some of the, that seems like an fluid. operation. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, was, it was like, I was awake <laughs> for it and everything. And it was like basically getting like a cavity filled at the dentist kind of thing. Like uh, not quite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's they easy used, now. They used the same freezing or whatever mm. he said. Um, but yeah, they, you know, stuck a needle in and pulled some stuff out and it was pitch black. So, it's a little bit, you know, <laughs> not nice it's to look black. at. Yeah, oh, he actually the, the, the doctor didn't even know what it was. Like he was like he like was smelling it and like kind of like oh, look at it and he was like he had to send he had Put to send your pipe and <laughs> smoke it. <laughs> he had to send it off to who knows where to actually know what it was. But um, yeah, NASA, pretty interesting. Wuhan. <laughs> 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 it's in a petri dish somewhere now yeah they're growing a clone jackson clone it's actually on craigslist <laughs> <laughs> wait so they didn't actually go in and remove the appendix i still have my appendix oh, yeah interesting. i know they said it was too dangerous to to remove um you know when it was so inflamed or whatever but um mm. they said i you know i have to keep a very tight eye on it and if it starts to get any worse i have to be like you know, if I'm somewhere else, I have to be on my way on, on a flight home ASAP to 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 get it fixed. Because um, yeah, I could I think it yeah could go anytime again. But um, I think I'm gonna try and get it, you know, taken out maybe off season. I just I don't know. It's kind of hard with timing because I think it's like two weeks of of recovery, and I only have two weeks this summer. So it's <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> It's weird that we're all born with a ticking time bomb of an organ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it doesn't even do anything either. It's yeah. so I useless. don't know what it does yet. No, no, it's a vestigial organ, which means it's no longer useful. So yeah. uh, right. other animals use the appendix to like digest grass and stuff. Yeah. So but you can't digest grass anymore. So, <laughs> so it used to be. Is that? It, yeah. It was at one point useful to us. Exactly. And then we evolved. And exactly. Now it's so just like there. a cow would probably have like a killer appendix. Yeah, killer appendix. <laughs> yeah, because they're just crushing grass. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, uh, do you have a gnarly scar now, or just, I, just like a little tiny needle poke uh, right now? Yeah, and I think chicks when don't it's dig that. yeah, no. <laughs> um, I think it's actually when you do get it taken <laughs> out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a pretty small scar, anyways, because I don't know how they do it now, but it's a pretty straightforward surgery when it's not inflamed. Like they do it all the time. So I think you only get like a tiny little hole. It's not like some crazy, you know, stomach. Sounds thing, like your doctor will just kind of like put a <laughs> straw in there and suck it out. It's yeah, like maybe. siphoning yeah. gas. <laughs> <laughs> like, smells it. Yeah. Yeah. It takes out the black thing. What the hell is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never seen that before. That's so do you, do, how many scars do you have in your body now? Well, I mean. Like, like major scars. Like surgery scars. I just have. My collarbone one that's pretty big. I don't know if you can probably see it. Um, Disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I've got I've got scars everywhere. You know, yeah. this, this one right here is like a tooth going through my lip. Ooh. And, mm. You know, my knees are all banged up. Shins are all banged up. I've got a pretty good, like, looks like a tiger scar here. Sick. I mean, you can kind of see it there. 
just like belly slid into a rock garden on that one. But um, how did you get the tooth scar? How did the tooth go through your lip? I did half a front flip at a skate park. Oh, yeah, goodness. Just well, didn't actually mean to do a front flip, but just nosedive into concrete and then just I don't know. The, who, was just, anybody there to witness that? Were you alone? Um, you it was actually alone? it was in the Squamish little tiny skate park next to the BMX track. I think my dad was doing like a dig day or, or like helping out at the BMX track and I was over riding the skate park. And so I was over there with like, you know, just a, you know, like two buddies of mine. And then this is a long time ago. I think I was probably like five or six, but um, yeah, like went into there and then had to like run over to the, to the BMX track, you know, just like crying and bleeding out of my face. And my dad was just like, what happened? But um, yeah. My goodness. My goodness. Okay, so we wanna we wanna watch a couple videos here, and we gotta okay. we gotta we gotta do we gotta do the thing. We gotta do the classic. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry, but we're wondering actually. Okay, so so what we're gonna watching here is uh, Jackson Jackson Run Bike to Kindergarten. Is this is that the yeah. title? Yeah, Jackson Run Bike to Kindergarten. Okay, so this is where you became a viral sensation, right? This yeah, this has probably is a been good... seen millions of times. That's still my house, by the way, as well. Like I I just was in that exact room this morning. Is that still your mom? <laughs> well, it's just three yes. years ago, so. Run, bitch! Run! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we wanted to ask you, because we we pretty much listened to all the podcasts you've been on in the past, and everybody asks you about the run bike video, right? Yeah. We were wondering if you if this is annoying for you now when people bring this up, if it's embarrassing, or if you just enjoy it still. Like, What's your relationship with this video? I mean... I think it's hilarious. You know, it's kind of the start of, I guess you could say, the start of my career. I mean, you know, everyone knows me by this video. Your which career. Is funny, but, um, Two years old. <laughs> six. Six, six. I was six, six in this six, one. Six. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty funny one because it's like, like the story behind this was basically just me and my dad wanted to make a video for my grandparents and stuff like that. And so we, you know, just went out. I had to wear the backpack, even though there was nothing in it. I had to wear the backpack the whole time. And I was <laughs> complaining the whole time that the backpack was so annoying. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And then we just went out and, you know, made this little video on a little tiny dad cam thing and posted it and it went crazy viral. So I think it's still pink bikes. Number one viewed video or really? whatever, highest viewed video. I th I'm not sure if that's the same. Oh, name, uploaded straight it, to pink bike. Yeah. Did yeah. you get that YouTube ad? Sense? No, I, I think it's actually, we uploaded it to, YouTube, but it also blew up on oh, okay. Pink Bike as well. But I don't know if you even got paid from YouTube back then. So I th probably, probably. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have got a nine cent check or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. So I missed. I was in, in the generation to have the opportunity to try out these run bikes. Wh what? <laughs> That's such oh a sketchy, sketchy clip. <laughs> you're now on the trails now going down routes on this run bike. There's no pedals on this thing. You're just no. holding on for dear life and uh Oh god. Taking <laughs> that's, well, that's, a, that's a, from a So that's a that's a really funny one as well. Because the amount of Dad. people that commented on yeah. me drinking out of the disgusting lake that uh -huh. was like he that parents shouldn't be, you know, letting their kid drink that stuff. It's like gonna hurt them or whatever and it's I like got worms other <laughs> 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 yeah people were saying that and then it was also people commenting like why is he out in the woods alone like what's he doing there it's like <laughs> who's filming the video like <laughs> well it's funny i think there's a joke in there somewhere like what what do they put in the water these days yeah uh, right. nothing it's just straight from the lake yeah was worms that alice all. lake water is that alice um lake? what lake is that dad edith lake edith lake yeah, yeah. Edith. I think he drank it. Yeah, he drank it. <laughs> it's more like drank it. <laughs> oh, my. You God. still doing that these days? Just drinking straight from the lake? Is that, Why not? Is that a thing <laughs> that you can do well, if I, it's no. still water? It, in a video, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to do it. Hollywood magic, right? For the tubes. Yeah. But, I yeah, so I never had an opportunity to try one of those run bikes. But, like, what do you, you know, obviously, you're pretty skillful. Pretty skillful. <laughs> How much do you attribute to those run bikes? I mean, you know, I feel like... Um, those run bikes have come a long ways. You know, you see those crazy carbon fiber ones now and stuff like that. But um, that one was really, I think, ahead of its time because it had this little rubber suspension thing. So it made it a lot easier to, you know, do all those landings off of rocks and whatever and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I just, I mean, it was kind of this, just how I started. I felt like I 
was able to, you know, run around. It was kind of a mix of running and biking, if that makes sense. Because, like, yeah. you know, if you're just sitting there pedaling, it's whatever. But, you know, every kid pretty much likes to run. So it's kind of just a mix of the two. And, you know, my parents loved it as well because, you know, instead of walking or whatever places, it would take forever. I could just scoot on my run bike and we'd be getting there way faster. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was basically just kind of the start of riding for me. And, you know, you learn a lot just just by doing that. And then uh, yeah, it definitely helped me you know, build through the years. But it's just like the bottom of the pyramid, I guess. <laughs> Did the other kids see it that you went to school with? Um, yeah, you know, all, all the kids from my school definitely remember that video being like, you know, you know it, it, even the kids that went to that school and stuff like that. And everyone remembers, everyone, re everyone remembers that. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. I wonder how many, how many sold. How many run bikes? Yeah, true. Where's yeah, the, where's no the friggin' commission on yeah, that one? Right? Yeah. <laughs> you um, literally Google run bike and that video comes. Like, I so actually, it's insane. Yeah, when I was in Threadbow, the Australian Nationals race, I was doing like a signing session or whatever, and some kid brought up one of those bikes, and he was like, "Your video got me into mountain biking, and I bought one of these things, and I like signed the, signed the thing." And that's got to be like the cool. definition of full circle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it was pretty sick. That's it's amazing, cool. man. Yeah, I mean, you are loved all around the world now. Like, we did a deep dive on your Instagram looking for fun content uh, to talk about today. And, man, people were just huge Jackson Goldstone fan even mm -hmm. like eight, nine, ten years ago. Yeah. What's it like now? Been traveling. Oh, that's. <laughs> yeah. Traveling the world and, and meeting these people and, you know, getting the love. It's crazy. Um, you know, I, I've been, uh, you know, this last kind of. This year, I guess, I've, you know, been blowing up a bunch. All my Instagram stuff has been doing really, really well. And, you know, I've been seeing a lot more a lot more people from, you know, worldwide that are recognizing me, which is really cool. And, um, you know, by going down to that trip to Mexico, I've gained like 20,000 followers just from like going there and showing a face. It's crazy how much, you know, um, kind of outside of North America and Europe that people love mountain biking. Like it's, you know, South America is crazy for that stuff. And I think it's definitely, uh, you know, people don't realize that. Wow. Okay, let's let's explain that, Graham. <laughs> Jeez, this so, is it's a, up now. So, this is sorry. old. This is the part you guys of the podcast where we embarrass you. <laughs> yeah, this is deep. Blame Jason. This, this is what he brought up. <laughs> okay, uh, if you don't mind, explain this, Graham. So, uh, I'm, let me actually read it. It says, just released. Yeah, it's, then, it's like, a, I'm pretty sure this was a mountain bike video game. They re they the uh, I can't remember who you know made it or whatever, but they uh, reached out to me a long time ago, you know, asking to make me one of like the people that you go up against or whatever that you battle when you're doing like a when you're playing it or whatever. So like you were the boss. Yeah, I was like a, I was like boss. a I was like a boss. I was actually the first boss, so I wasn't okay. quite the final <laughs> boss. I was I was like the easy one. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, there was like a bunch of other pros in there. I think Sam Reynolds and, and Mac McDuff in there. And, and there was a bunch of other guys too. But yeah, it was pretty much just like a, they just, you know, I had to take a photo like that. And uh, and that was pretty much it. And they put me in and, and whatever. But it was pretty cool being in a video game that young. It's so surreal. When, what, what year is that? What, 2018? 2016. 2016. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You a long time ago. In a video game when you were 12 years old. Pretty cool. Yeah. How many video games do you in now? Is this the only one? Or? That's the only one I know of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got more, more checks to cut. So if, if, anyone's, Grand Theft Auto. if anyone else is, you know, yeah. We got more here. Oh my yeah, goodness. we got another gram to explain. <laughs> Sorry, man. This is just. I don't uh, know if I can explain this one, dude. <laughs> That's what I wondered if you'd even. I think this these. is when my dad used to run my Instagram. <laughs> yeah. So I, <laughs> we need to get him on the. <laughs> This is adorable, mic. though. This is adorable. <laughs> uh, so this is Jackson the on a road bike. The lime green outfit. <laughs> Highlighter boy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're very you're visible. You're road riding in Vancouver at, uh, what is this? Um, what do you call this? Seawall? Like sea yeah. yeah I, I don't know. Where Science World is. It's not Furry Creek. It's not. Olympic Village? Olympic. Oh, yeah. um, False Creek. False, False Creek. Creek. Yeah. 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 Going for a ride with your dad? I'm assuming. Yeah. I guess this is just us, you know, cruising around, going for a ride. I don't really remember much of this one. But <laughs> you blocked it out. <laughs> it's like feel, a nice day for road riding. I feel guess, like that's right? just good parenting, making you that visible. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not getting run over or anything. No, you're on like full drop bars and everything though. Like you're, you. I remember that road bike. That thing was actually pretty sick. I'm pretty sure it was a handy down for my sister. But um, yeah, that thing was dope. I barely rode it. Obviously, I'm not really much of a roadie guy. But um, 
I'm cool. picturing what you were doing on that bike that day, and you were definitely flying off some curbs, going down some hills. <laughs> you were not staying on the path. That's oh, my sure. goodness. I remember something from that day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had a huge on the road. <laughs> <laughs> you had a huge crash. I, I had a huge nodding. crash. Okay. <laughs> For some reason, I was bored riding the road or whatever. And I went, I went and like, you know how you normally hold like that on the bars? I went to hold like cross arm for oh, some reason yeah. and like turned one way, but then it was like the opposite way that I was actually expecting. And I just washed out on the road and had a big crash. I do remember actually that now. That was pretty funny. <laughs> I think I've done that once before. You think it's going to be easy and then it just completely flips your brain upside down. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know what I was thinking there. I don't think I was thinking about much, actually. <laughs> Have you ever yeah. been to a carnival and ride the bike where you steer one way, but the wheel goes the other direction? I've seen videos of those, but I actually haven't ridden one. My buddy actually made one when he was in school, but I never got to, oh, really? never got to ride one. Oh, no, that's neat. That seems scary. It, mm -hmm. Interesting thing about those. I, I saw it on a YouTube video one time. Someone practiced how to ride it. And once you finally unlock it, you have the clicking moment and you can figure it out. Suddenly you lose the ability to ride a bike the normal way. Really? And, and riding and it the go, normal way yeah, becomes hard. Way. And then you have to relearn and then you lose the other way. Yeah. So it's very challenging to learn how to do both. It's ah. a weird like muscle memory thing. Have you ever looked at one of those videos where it's like a train moving and they just say if you look at it a different way, it looks like it's moving the opposite direction? Yeah. Seems like that. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen those. All right, we got another gram here. This is you in 2016. I'm yeah. impressed that you guys have found these kind of things. I didn't even know they existed anymore. All you got to do is scroll. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually really <laughs> easy. <laughs> it's Nardwar over here. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is you at the top of Red Bull Joyride. Yeah, I don't think that I actually rode Joyride this year. I'm pretty sure I just, you know, staged it and made it look like I was riding it in this. Yeah, Who's that, film that's about? Seco. Yeah, it's filming. Seco, I mean, <sighs> yeah, Seco, and it says I'm it's for to... a uh, segment of Builder that never made it, never aired. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, because my I had a Builder segment, but it was actually kind of more of like a dirt jump slope style trick one. Um, yeah, I guess I guess that that piece never made it because that was my downhill bike at the time. Um, what were you doing? Or we, it was just like a mock. Yeah, I, at I'm trying Island. to remember of why we were there. I think it was just like I, I, I don't. I don't really know. Maybe just me, you know, posing in front of it, kind of like looking into the future, maybe of what I wanted to do. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. At that time, did you was that the goal? Like Joyride, that kind of. At path? that time, yes. Yeah, because then I wasn't really doing any racing. Well, I was still doing, like, you know, some, but I was still actually too young to do most of the crankwork stuff. I was still too young to do all the BC Cup stuff and, you know, didn't even think about going to Europe. So, um, yeah, that, at, at that point in time, what year is that? 20, 2016. 16 again, yeah. Yeah, so like 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, was, I was pretty, you know, I was still doing, like, you know, the local Tooney races and stuff like that and, and you know, still doing – you know, some of the small, small stuff. But, At this um, point, do you the think... The Fat that, Wednesdays, sorry. Mm. Do you think that you were um, dreaming of becoming a Red Bull athlete at this point in your life? Was that something that when you're this young, you even thought was possible? I think as soon as, as soon as you recognize and realize what a Red Bull athlete is, I think that's when you start dreaming to be one. So, you know, I could have been even younger than that. But, yeah, I've always, always dreamt of being in Red Bull. And it's interesting because I remember when you chose the 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 path and the there was a fork in the road and it was become like a mm -hmm. style athlete you know trick kind of rider or yeah. become world cup racer and i know that in our little friend group circle we were surprised that you took the world cup i think i think everybody was surprised yeah. and and you know like that's the funny thing is that like um yeah i feel like people didn't really realize that i still was you know a pretty good racer and like did a whole bunch of these races that um, you know, you know, I did well at, and like I did this, this one called the rookies world championships as well. And I won that like three times. And it was like, that was basically like a world champs for kids. They, they brought every, you know, every country, they had a live stream and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I feel like it was just less noticed the, the racing stuff that I did. So everyone thought that I was going, you know, slope style, slope style. Cause that's what they saw on my Instagram and stuff. Cause I was doing more of that. And then, um, you know, I thought I found that um, if I were to to quit, you know, the racing and just focus straight on the on the slope style stuff, it would be 
harder to go back to downhill in the future because those two years as a junior is really, really important at, like for building. And so I was like, I'll give this junior years a shot because I only have this, you know, these two years to give it, a, give it a go. And then, you know, I feel like I can always fall back on slopes down where it's harder to fall back on World Cup racing. So that's kind of where the direction I, I went there. But, um, you know, I still don't want to let the, the slope style die in me. Like I still, you know, I'm seeing all the boys at Dark Fest right now and I'm, I'm definitely jealous of being there. But, um, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think I'll do a few, few little uh, few red events this year as well. Yeah, it seems like a really dumb question, but how are you so good at biking? <laughs> like, even looking through the gram, like, eight, nine years ago, like, you were insane. Like, the whips you were doing, the like, the style you had. Mm -hmm. Is it just because you've been doing it for so long? Is it because you grew up in I Squamish? Think... Is it because you're a freak because you drank out of the lake? What's in the water? <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe go drink out of the lake and you'll turn it like me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Disclaimer, do not drink <laughs> no, out of don't lakes. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> um I think what's kind of helped me get to where I am today is is actually, you know, doing all those kind of things of like, you know, I used to be trials, I used to ride BMX, I used to do skate park, you know, downhill, whatever it is. I think when you ride all those different kinds of things, um, you just get better at all of them and then you can kind of translate those kind of things. Like if I were doing like a manual or something, like you don't realize that you're actually, you know, getting so much practice on balance and, you know, brake pressure and, you know, like brake uh, balance and all that kind of stuff. You're like, even just doing some of the smallest things, you learn so much that I feel like if you, you know, do all those different kinds of aspects of mountain biking, it just, you know, helps everything get better and better. So I feel like, you know, if someone who only rides downhill or whatever, you know, fastest laps all day. They never go to the skate park, never go do anything. You know, you can see that they struggle on other things. And yeah. You did trials, you say? Long time ago. Oh my God. Trials bike. I don't think I have a trials that. moto now that I ride a lot and that thing's amazing. But yeah, long time ago. Trials biking. No, I'm thinking like Ryan Leach, Danny McCaskill, that type of trials or trials it was like, moto biking? No, yeah, that kind of trials. I okay. mean, yeah, again, this is so long ago. I don't yeah. remember it, but. Yeah, just like trying to do like these little circuits or whatever without touching the ground, but only did a few like a year or two of that. Sure. Now, what inspired you to get into that? Because I know I, I, I heard <laughs> Dude, honestly it was so long ago I can barely remember. Well, it <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, we listened to some podcasts, and <laughs> we we learned that you were such a fan of Danny McCaskill that you were looking. Yeah, he you was had the guy. iPad. You were so young, and you would just type in D A N, and you would find Danny McCaskill. Yeah, I'm I'm assuming Danny McCaskill inspired you to get on the trails bike. Perhaps. Yeah, I mean, he kind of inspired me to to do you know riding just in general. Like he was he was the guy that I watched so many videos of when I was younger. So I just kind of you know he definitely like that was more in the run bike days that I was like you know really watching him a lot more, and uh, I couldn't really. I was, as you can see, I was not doing trials, but like, there's some definitely some inspiration in that run bike to vid oh, for sure. video of you know jumping off the rocks and whatever. I'm assuming since uh, since then you've met Danny. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, He's a you, legend. Do you remember? Were you really stoked to meet him first time? I'm pretty sure the first time I met him was my birthday what in great birthday <laughs> Huntington Beach, and we randomly ran into him. I was, I think it was my tenth birthday or something. Tenth, yeah. I think you're living the dream, Jackson. I don't think <laughs> childhood gets better than Dude, this. Dude, this. this was such a coincidence, though. I did not expect to be meeting him there. So, yeah, we were just, like, at the Huntington Beach Pier, you know, just there for a little trip, and then was, like, on the pier and was looking down kind of at the little um, path or whatever. Who's and that guy riding like, on the railway? Guy, who's that guy with a Red Bull hat on there, a Red Bull helmet over there? And so we, like, you know, go over, and it was like, holy shit, Danny McCaskill. And... um yeah, I think he, I think he kind of recognized me from the run bike to kindergarten video or whatever. Like he kind of like knew me or whatever. And then, um, yeah, that was you know that was a dream come true. He let me ride his bike and stuff like that. And there's a photo of me on his on his trials bike, and I'm you know it's this massive thing. But <laughs> um, yeah, that was the first time I properly met him, and you know I've been good buddies ever since. What what brought both of you to Huntington Beach? Is that where Red Bull is located, or? Um, well, I mean, I think he was just filming a video down there, and then I was down there to probably just go to Woodward or something like that mm. back in back in those days. But um, yeah, I think I think I was probably at Woodward, and then came down to Huntington Beach just for a little, little vacation. 
Was Was there any other athletes you were obsessed with when you, when you were a kid uh, to watch in videos and whatnot? Uh, you know, were you watching a lot of Brandon Seminole? Yeah, I mean, I think I think everybody watches Brandon Seminole. Like you pretty uh, yeah, you're pretty out of the loop if you're not. So um, yeah, definitely you know watched a bunch of him. I'm trying to think of who other. Do you ever people, cross paths with Brandon? He's uh, I, I mean, I do, but I you know he lives pretty close to us, like just on the on the coast there. But I, you know, I never see him. He's, he's an elusive dude. He's, he's right? a very elusive guy. Yeah. Never, never really see much of him, but uh, yeah. yeah, he's cool. A- any other riders that you love to to watch when you're younger? Like, I'm, I'm just trying to think of who I used to watch. Like those were definitely the main two. Were um, you watching World Cup races when you were young? Yes. Not, not. I don't think I was like clued in every weekend to them. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's definitely. I watched a good amount of them, but I don't think I was I was super super clued in on them until. What, what about Travis Pastrana of Nitro Circus? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny one. Um, yeah, I, I don't even remember where I first met him, but but I see this. This is the video that you guys got up here now yeah, is pull, of, of the Vancouver one. show. This is the Vancouver show. This yeah. is Jason's video. I was in the crowd. No way. Yeah, you're doing a backflip, tuck no hander on a huge ramp. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy one. So. Basically, um, you know, through Woodward and through just, I don't know, kind of being around that that scene, um, you know, I ended up knowing some of the Nitro Circus guys, like Beaver Fleming. He's uh, one of the skateboarder guys. Um, I'm sorry, what? Beaver Beaver Fleming? Fleming? Yeah. What did he say? (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, he's he's one of the skateboarder guys. Um, I think he's one of the only skateboarder guys anyways anymore. He's he's insane. Absolute shredder. But... um, yeah, he lived at Woodward, and so I kind of, you know, got my way into Nitro Circus then, and, um, you know, they let me test out one of the jumps when I was, I want to say, 13, maybe? Test out the jump, so they're like, hey, 13-year-old Jackson, <laughs> yeah. can you make sure this is safe? Yeah, it was, like, <laughs> it was like they set it up in this, like, other spot, like, not on a, in a stadium or whatever, and so I had all the people there that were practicing and stuff, like, for the for the shows. And, the, you know, they let me, you know, come there and, and hit the jump and stuff like that. And then I think this is a few, year, like maybe two years, three years later. Um, and, uh, yeah, they, you know, they had the Vancouver show and uh, they let me ride the practice. So, like, whatever, you know, doing the, the practice when none of the um, spectators were there or anything. And, uh, you know, I was just in the in the little locker room or whatever. And then they were, uh, they came out and was like, do you want to, be in the in the show and so um obviously I said yes had to sign this little contract thingy and uh <laughs> and then I was boom there there I was in the show I had this little tiny segment where you know I got to do two tricks or whatever and uh yeah it was pretty funny because a whole bunch of my friends from school and stuff were in the crowd and they didn't actually know that I was going to be in it no way because um you know it was so last minute but um yeah I definitely rocked up to school the next day feeling like a boss <laughs> <laughs> What was school like for you? I'm very interested in your relationship between mm. school because I know you took a lot of time off to do it, mm. to, to, to get this far. Um, yeah, like, were you just the man? Were people, were the kids <laughs> jealous of you? Was there, like, what was the relationship between biking, school, and your friends? I mean, I think there was definitely a lot of, you know, people being being jealous of, of me going all these different places and stuff like that. But, you know, everyone everyone's pretty supportive. And, you know, I've got... I've, a whole bunch of friends from school that are, you know, I'm still kicking around with and stuff like that. But um, it was actually, uh, it was kind of hard to actually have friends in school, um, you know, be, just because I was away so much that I would like, you know, I'd never get to see them and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, everyone was pretty chill and pretty stoked that I was, that I was doing it. And we always did like this, uh, whatever, like the person who's most likely to do this or whatever. And like uh, at the end of the year, you sign all these things and stuff like that. And I was always like... The Superlatives? The, is that what that's called? I can't Superlatives. remember what they're called. I think that but sounds right. Yeah. I was always the person that was most likely to be famous in that. Everyone always chose me for that one. So that was pretty funny. I think that's cheating if you're already famous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most likely to remain famous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you, did you like you think you missed out on any of those like quintessential high school experiences or did you just learn that stuff on the, the school of racing the world? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the school of Red Bull. I mean, I def- yeah. yeah, I definitely missed out on a bunch of stuff. Like I didn't go to the prom or, you know, all the graduation stuff and I missed out on all that just cause you know, I was busy racing and stuff like that. And 
Um, Prom. Wait, so when was this? Uh, this was last year, summer. Have you graduated high school? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Filling me in here. <laughs> I thought you were in the senior year right now. No, no, no. Oh, so I've, you graduated. I've, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm done Congratulations. Now. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, yeah, I just missed out on, on you know, all the graduation ceremonies. Okay. And were, were you upset about that or? Not really. I mean, it looked <laughs> like some of the people had some, threw some good parties and stuff like that, but um yeah, I mean, I was I was still having a great time over in Europe and stuff, and I think I actually, you know, did did well at one of the races that was at the same time. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely was okay with missing it, but whatever. So, are you walking around the hallways with a Red Bull hat on at school? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was only there for like a few months though when I had my Red Bull helmet or my Red Bull hat. Like, I uh, I actually from like January of 2022 to the end of the year. Like I, uh, I, um, I just did like an online course thing that I didn't have to, didn't have to actually go to school. So I only had the Red Bull hat from like October 21. So only had that those three months or whatever in school. But definitely when I showed up that first day, people were like, what? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Jackson, nice hat. And I didn't tell anyone as well. I just surprised people. I just like checked it on and then showed up. And then your teachers immediately told you, Jackson, take the hat off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, ma'am, I can't. I'm congr- contractually obligated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Here, have a Red Bull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you have a good group of friends that you grew up with, too. And then a bunch of shredders and supportive group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah all, all, all my buddies, you know, ride a bunch. And it's cool to, you know, to be able to just go out and ride with your boys all, any day of the week. Yeah. One thing I heard you say in a podcast that was surprised to hear was that you said you didn't think that Squamish had like a really good dirt jump training zone mm. yet. Is that so? Cause I think that you guys have a really sick dirt jump zone, but I can see it's not quite to the magnitude that you're probably dreaming of. Yeah. So, I mean, that was kind of the other thing is like when I was, you know, had to make the decision to, to go either way, it was like either, you know, drive two hours to air rec center, like, you know, every day or whatever, you know, do a whole bunch of that kind of stuff or like, you know, drive five minutes to the trail. So it's kind of like it made a lot more sense and it was a lot easier to train for that kind of stuff where, um, you know, the casino jumps, they're they're really sick in their own way. They're super fun to ride, but they're just a lot harder to, you know, you can't really convert those jumps to joyride or like, you know, some of the Crankworks events like the, those kind of stuff are, you know, so much bigger and, and way different that, yeah, you'll still be able to train a little bit on jumps like that, but it's just not quite there um, for, for you know, training for the big dog stuff. But yeah, that makes sense. What about the Seminuck compound? Where's the invite? Yeah. <laughs> Those translate, I'm pretty sure. I'm not even sure what, what he's doing with that, actually. I, mm. I think it's still running, but uh, I don't know. Leave him be for now. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. So uh, uh, are you excited to go to France? Are you, are you looking forward to... You know, what's ahead or are yeah. you a little nervous with your recent um, surgery? I mean, I think it's uh, people are definitely going to see, you know, like I started the season so hot with winning, uh, you know, Aussie Nationals and, and New Zealand Nationals that I'm going to go into this and, you know, I feel like I'm I'm definitely not on the pace at all right now after, you know, not riding my downhill bike for, you know, three weeks or whatever and only riding twice uh, on the normal bike and, you know, I've been in the gym once, so... Like, I've just literally been doing nothing and just trying to recover from this appendix thing. So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm going to be definitely a little bit off the pace, but I'm basically just going to be using this this France trip as a, as just a, you know, bike time and kind of get back into the feel of it and uh, prepare for, for the actual World Cups, not not just this test event. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to, excited to get on the downhill bike if it shows up. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is first year elite for you? Yeah. How, like how, sorry, Dave, this is going to get kind of nerdy. Dave's not a mountain biker. <laughs> no, Dave's right. not a mountain biker. I've just been explain. blacked out the last uh, 10 hour. years of your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since that Bear Pog championship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I just wanted to it's ask. It's not a mountain like, bike pod, though. It's a comedy pod. Just remember <laughs> exactly. That. Right. You're, you're going to elite. Like, do you have, like, goals in your mind of, of what that can look like and, like, how you attack that? Because I imagine it's different than junior where you're like, I know where I sit, kind of. Yeah, I mean, there's, I've obviously got the goal that I want to do the best I can. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's definitely people that are like thinking like, oh, like he's going to go in and just win everything where it's like, no, like he, 
That's pretty unreachable, I think. Um, I feel like, you know, there's definitely some venues and races that, you know, I feel like I did from comparing to last year's times and stuff like that. Like, I've, I've had good results in Elite already um, from last year. And, you know, I feel like with the with the new downhill bike this year, it's, you know, got me even more confident and stuff like that. But, um, you know, ex my expectations are low because, you know, I don't want to you know, overshoot myself. But um, I feel like, you know, I'm just going to kind of take it race by race and just do the best I can. But there's definitely people out there that, like, oh, he's going to win everything and stuff like that. But uh, that's just the internet. Don't worry yeah. about that. <laughs> I'd like to, obviously, but I don't think that's going to happen. Definitely. Well, who knows? My goal is a podium, a World Cup podium. That's, that'd, be, that'd be the dream come true, but who knows? I don't, I don't understand how you deal with this pressure, man. Like, if I, if I'm, if I have to ride A-line and I know the chairlift's watching me, I get nervous. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, I definitely think, you know, being on the syndicate team is like, it's such a good environment and stuff like that. I feel like, you know, I lose a lot of the pressure there just because I'm having such a good time at the races. And that definitely helps a lot. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely still feel it like at the top of a world cup race, I'm, you know, so nervous, but I think it, it sometimes helps to put a good run down. Is it, it's like the good butterflies. Yeah. Where you're like excited to yeah. do the thing, even though it is, Potentially gnarly, like yeah. you, you're stoked to go do it. Obviously, sure. you obviously love it. Yeah. What, do you, do you uh, have a, like a process to calm down? I know. I know. We were speaking to Caleb Holanco, and we asked him like, how, how does he drop into something that's you know super gnarly? And it was a very specific process. He's like, I usually take like six deep breaths, and then I mm. whatever. <laughs> no, I don't have. I don't no. have one of those because it's like. I feel like with a World Cup, it's it's really hard to find the balance of like, you know, being super like, you know, jacked up and hyped for your race run over like, you know, being calmed and settled and not overdoing it. Like, I feel like I haven't quite found the exact perfect warm up and stuff like that for for me, but you know, hopefully that'll come, whatever. But um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't really do much. Just take a, you know, a few deep breaths before, uh, before the race run, shake the arms out and then drop in really. Yeah. Jason and I were uh, sessioning a little dirt jump in the area and, you know, we're trying to relearn our 360s and we're rusty. And we were talking about how when you haven't hit a lip in a while and you haven't done a trick in a while, it's like you completely forgot how to do it. And then as soon as you get to the top of the lip, you're like, oh, right. And then you have this mm -hmm. muscle memory. I, I do feel that exact same way yeah. with, with dirt jump tricks now. It's like I'm so scared to go pull a 360 and then as soon as I'm like, committed to actually doing it it just comes around perfect and you know the muscle memory comes back i definitely do notice that yeah what, what do you do to overcome like i i, I need a tangible tip from you jackson <laughs> I, next time i'm dropping in and i'm scared shitless i just need don't be scared i need like jackson in like <laughs> a fall. little bubble above me and like you know like an eagle or a wolf on the other side and i need to harness the power of jackson and the and the, the, the wolf <laughs> what what advice can you give me to like harden up and man up just Commit to it, I guess. All right. You know, it's only, <laughs> it's right. only dirt. Does he look like a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll be there saying, just commit to it. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's, fair right that's what I tell pretty much everybody when they're like scared to do something. Just commit. Just commit. It's that simple, huh? I mean, right. you'll get farther than, than just sitting there. So if you commit to it, at least you're going to give it a shot. I guess so. That's good advice. What about to a novice rider like dave because <laughs> i was thinking now dave has been mountain biking with us mm -hmm. twice uh twice yeah mm -hmm. what was the first time we did the we the did video. the cumberland video and then he came to colorado yeah, oh I yes did, colorado he was course. dressed as a teletubby yeah, okay, right. <laughs> so like we, we made lap. a video on mahalo my dude and it was uh mountain biking is easy and dave was the center of it and we took right. him for a ride in cumberland yeah. and he, he got to ride an e-bike <clears throat> and he didn't crash. He survived. He did He's crash. Here. Yeah. Well, bit. yeah. You, know, you did crash. I hit my butt really hard. <laughs> the bike came up and spanked me. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, you know, I'm asking for your advice for like high level tricks, but I'm wondering on like a, a, on a very low level, like an entry level to mountain biking, what advice maybe what did your dad used to give you or someone else in, in your life give you? For example, my dad would always tell me, look where you want to go. Yeah. Simple. Do you have any, like, fundamental tips? Um, I mean, there's so many out there. That's kind of a hard question. Um, I'll just, just spit them out. Definitely, you know, look where you want to go. Um, one thing, you know, with cornering, it's, like, one thing I noticed that I do a lot is, like, 
you know, I point my hips where I want to go and I, and I raise my left elbow or whatever on a right hand corner. It's like opposite, opposite arm to the corner. You raise that elbow and you get so much more pressure on that. And so you can rail the corner harder. Um, you know, there's stuff like dropping your heels in, in braking bumps. So you get more traction and like, you know, I, I mean, I could go on forever. About uh, please go on like forever. That. I've already <laughs> learned two things. Um, <laughs> oh, what, what I got to listen back to these. Um, People right now listening are taking notes, I swear. Yeah, you know, like popping a, a dirt jump or whatever, you know, compressed with your legs and then pull up with your arms. And I, I find that t explaining to people how to pop a jump is one of the hardest things to do. It is really hard. Yeah, yeah. Really people never get it. But legs, then arms, and then, yeah. So, okay, so cornering, you're saying you raise your left elbow if you're going to take a right turn? Yeah, it's like kind of opposite. Like, I feel like when... When you raise your elbow, you get so much more downward pressure onto the onto the tires and stuff like that that you can have more grip. Okay. So you can hit that corner harder, but then you have to point your hips to where you want to go. So it's kind of like a a different movement, but you just want to drop in like that, I guess. Where and the you lower and the lower you get, the better. Right. Of course, and it looks better too for the photos. Yeah. What? Where are you looking when you're hitting a corner at like max speed? Are you looking way beyond the corner? Yeah. You know, usually, oh, I mean, that's kind of a, it depends on the corner and right. stuff like that. Of course. Um, but yeah, usually, usually just like, you know, if you're like starting the corner, you're looking at the exit of the corner, maybe even a bit, bit after for like some of the tighter ones. Um, longer corners, you probably look you know, halfway through the corner when it's like a long sweeping one. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to take those tips to the trails. So <laughs> Dave, I hope you wrote those down. Yeah. I did. Very Mentally. fundamental. <laughs> Uh, all right. Where do you want to take this, guys? Well, I I think well, we have a couple a couple good ones at the bottom here. How's your time? Good. I'm chilling. Oh, let okay. me just text. Let me yeah. just check if I've oh. gotten a, a message from my bike. I want to make sure <laughs> that the feeding off each other podcast is not responsible for Jackson missing his <laughs> flight to France. <laughs> we don't need that. That smoke. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that. Bad PR. Yeah. This is just Jackson texting hour now. He's mm -hmm. texting. He's texting his dad. He's saying, "Get me out of here." No, tell no, him no, that no. we're. Uh, <laughs> tell him that we have to go right now. Alonzo, make a, no, make like, a note uh, of the time code. Oh, my appendix. No, Jackson's oh, always yeah. been. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Jackson's always been a good friend to us, and uh, has appeared in a few of our videos too. Yeah, you can see him do a tuck no hander and how to be how to buy a mountain bike. Yeah, you were in that one. Yeah, he also teaches Andrew Santos how to whip and yep. how to. Whips are easy. Whips are easy. Yeah. That was that was a that was a pretty good one actually. Like that was that was the longer one. I think the other stuff was it a bit shorter stuff that we did. Uh, yeah, I, we, we had short cameos from you. Yeah. So in yeah. how to buy a mountain bike, you you did a tuck no hander at the Whistler jumps, and Jason yeah. sees you and then runs away. And it's like not for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That one was hilarious. And then we did the slash ad, and you, mm. you were gracious enough to show up for a quick cameo once mm -hmm. again. We buried oh, the guy yeah. in the hole up yeah. to his head, and you, you were in the background in the very first shot. Yeah. Uh, but then yeah, how to the how to whip. You appeared in that, and you taught Santos how to whip. So there's some good fundamentals in there too. Yeah, go go watch that next for uh, for more tips. Did you know that uh, Andrew and Kaz were beefing behind the scenes? Could you tell? <laughs> were they? <laughs> yeah, <they're laughs> I think the pressure of having to perform a really solid yeah. whip was really getting to Santos. I do remember Kaz being like, "Do it better, like, like, <laughs> like hey, stop sucking." <laughs> yeah, like, come on, like, give us some. Effort. I do remember a bit of chat actually. There yeah. was some debriefing, let's just say, after that, because I couldn't make it out. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, there was, there was some drama. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you actually did teach him how to get a pretty good whip. Yeah. So thanks for that. No problem. Yeah, you're the man. Um. Did you say you had questions down here? What? Yeah, well, I, I don't know. What, I want to bring it back to the realm Dave can understand. <laughs> and we want to talk houses. Houses. And oh, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What does Jackson Goldstone's dream house look like? like My dream house. Are oh. you going to build the Brandon Seminole compound? Like, are you even thinking about real estate at this point in your life? I am, actually. Okay. Yeah. Right. Who isn't? Yeah, I am. Who isn't? Um, <laughs> I love it. I'm not quite, obviously, not thinking about the dream house. That's a bit of a stretch already, uh, this early, but... um. I think a dream house for me is something close to the Squamish Trails, close to a river, so I can do like drink, obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah drink, drink out of it, and do like <laughs> ice baths and stuff like that. Water source, and then just something with a with a big bike garage 
and mm-hmm. uh, you know maybe, maybe some some room for a car or two there as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, what yeah. do you think of our bike rack here? That one's sick. This one, yeah, uh, looks a lot like mine. Go, oh, oh, looks but worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one looks way better. Ours is ours is yeah not. Quite that sick. It's, all, it's on a rail system, so you can shift each oh, bike. Oh, okay, you yeah, no, that's, it. that's way sicker. Yeah, we're maxed yeah. out right now. We got literally every single bike in here. Oh, you could squeeze another one there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's okay. Always good. Well, okay, so, yeah. Two-car garage. Yeah. Any jumps in the yard? I think it'd be fun to have, like, not, like, a training set in the yard, but, like, a set of jumps that are, like, you know, super, like, steep and, like, trails vibes kind of Mm, thing okay you know one that you'd have like a nice little hangout campfire spot and like a pizza oven or something like that that you could like whoa okay oh kind of like a hangout kind of like a hangout spot yeah kind of set of dirt jumps not like a training one like a mellow but fun set that you can style out this guy says he's not thinking about the dream house and he's talking about pizza ovens (laughs) Uh, i I just i just Just a simple two-car garage (laughs) i was just saying pizza because my dad's actually building a pizza oven in in our backyard oh Oh, hell yeah i said that fantastic and it looks great he might just be dream dad over there (laughs) yeah all maybe maybe, maybe have a golf simulator as well in my, oh, in my yeah. dream house mm. in the basement. Maybe. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the relationship with golf? You're a golf guy now. I am a golf guy now. I mean, I'm still pretty pretty new at it, but I feel like I've you know, progressed pretty uh, pretty quickly. I feel um, like once you start posting clips of you golfing on Instagram, yeah. you're a golf. Guy. Especially when those <laughs> clips are you skipping a golf ball across a pond twice. Yeah, that one was pretty sick. Actually, I got pretty <laughs> lucky there. Um, that was that was the second try. The first try didn't go as good. Okay, but um, you also got a hole in one. Which I is also something do. that sometimes never happens yeah. to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The hole in one was, was crazy. I was, I, you know, me and my buddy just hopped on the course for, uh, for, you know, a few holes. And um, I was like literally about to swing and I told my buddy to film it. Like I was like about to take my swing and then I was like, oh no, but like film it. And uh, just to, just to see. And then like he filmed it on like Snapchat. So there was a timer on the, like you couldn't film for, I think it was maybe 30 seconds or 40 seconds or whatever. So he filmed it. You can see it go in. But then when we were like running up to like make sure it went in the hole, it like cut right before you could actually <laughs> see and it stopped filming. So like, I kind of missed it on that and the quality wasn't as good. That's a rookie move was, right there. Yeah, it was still, I mean, you could still see it drop in. On I'm, the calling video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm calling fake. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been definitely golfing was kind of the one thing I could do with the, with the appendix when it was, you know, a little bit calmed down. So, um, yeah, I was, I was playing a lot last week. Very cool. Yeah, what is it about golf, though? Why? Who got you into Dude, it? Dude, I don't even know. I It just, like, my Instagram one day just, like, turned into everything golf. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. I'll just go to the range or whatever because, I'll you know, a few buddies from school used to play and stuff like that. But I feel like it's just kind of a nice separation from, from biking, you know, so high, high action and stuff like that where it's, like, pretty much just, like, going for a little nice walk and, you know, swinging this little ball around. That's but how I like to. You think just like guys, to wear polos. <laughs> that's pretty nice. This <laughs> is how the younger generation works. Instagram suggests something, they're like, "I got to do it." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, it's telling him to jump off a bridge, and it's like, uh, "Hey, you know." Yeah, I thought I it was thought it was going to be doing this. On Snapchat. Yeah, thought it was going to be this, you know, crazy relaxing sport where you just you know go walk around and hit this ball, but it gets pretty frustrating. It's, yeah, it's super stressful. Yeah, they let you in the golf carts. I feel like you'd just yes. wreak havoc in those golf carts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he puts his legs out and he runs, <laughs> it's a run <laughs> cart. <laughs> it's like Flintstone style. Yeah. Me, me and my me and my buddy from home that I play with a lot actually went out on a round just two days ago with a cart, but it was like hissing rain. To start and then like we teed off and it, the rain stopped and then once we got the whole eighteen the rain just came back again we hit like a perfect window oh. of no rain. What's with this rain lately, dude? It's eh? been no. crazy. Oh, weather, weather talk. talk. Here weather we go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> it's <a> stimulating stuff. <laughs> Regional and we'll be out of date by the time <laughs> yeah, this yeah. comes out. <laughs> Should we play this or that? Sure. Wait. Wait. All right. You guys ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. <clears throat> it's that time again, folks. Time to play this, this or, or that. that. The game where you choose between two radically different options, either this or that. Jackson, do you understand the rules? I got to choose this or that, right? That's yeah. that's pretty much it. All right, sound man, play that's that quick. music. Who's Am doing I doing it? it? Okay. Wet track or dry track? Dry track. Jumps or steeps? Steeps. 29 inch or 27 and a half? Can I say mullet? No. It's <laughs> on the game. <laughs> 29. 
Moto or golf? Oh. Moto. Film shoot or photo shoot? Film shoot. Broken collarbone or ruptured appendix? Oh. <laughs> Broken collarbone. Nitro Circus or Masters of Dirt? Oh. <laughs> um, Masters of Dirt was more recent, so I'm going to say that. Dick sized nipples or nipple sized dick? <laughs> Dick sized nipples. Sorry, Dad. Dick sized nipples. <laughs> this one's not even on the list. Smart. That was improvised. <laughs> yeah, right. Skate parks or dirt jumps? Dirt jumps. Suicide no hander or tuck no hander? Tuck no hander. Dirt in the eye or rock in the shoe? Rock in the shoe. Mullet or mohawk? Mullet. Learning a new trick on the first try or sinking a hole in one? Oh. I think the hole in one's more rare. Woodward or Joyride 150? Oh, that's a hard one as well. I think Woodward. Hot air balloon ride with Brandon Semenek or getting locked in a mall overnight with Danny McCaskill? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably get locked in a mall. I feel like he got more, more options to do. Oh, sorry, Semenek. Yeah. yeah. That's, Dream. A, that's a personal. <laughs> yeah, another personal. It's the mall. Dream dirt jumps in your backyard or skate park and foam pit in your backyard? Or basement, sorry. It said basement. Oh. Um, How big is that place? Very yeah, must have a big house for Uh Dirt jumps, I think. Yeah. Backflip or 360? 360. Audi 9s or Loose Fest? You guys suck with me. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so hard. Ah. Uh, that is a hard one. I can tell it's painful for you. Don't worry. Audi nines. Life will remain the same after this. Don't worry. <laughs> Whip-offs in Whistler or Innsbruck? Oh, my God. <laughs> Innsbruck's got a better jump, but Whistler's Whistler. So oh, I'm going to go, go with Whistler. Winning the World Cup overall in 2021 or 2022? 2022. Knack-knack or can-can? Knack. Loam or pow? Oh my goodness. Um, I gotta, I gotta go with loam. Oh, that's our first loam. Mm -hmm. Would you rather have a pet dinosaur the size of a hamster or a pet elephant the size of a mouse? Say that yeah, one well, again. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Run that back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what? Pet <laughs> elephant the We're size of a mouse. Would you rather have a tiny dinosaur or a tiny elephant as a pet? <laughs> Probably a tiny <laughs> elephant. Smart. Well, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have spaghetti for hair or ketchup for tears? I feel like ketchup for tears because I don't cry very often. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather only be able to whisper or shout everything? Oh, my goodness. Um, I feel like you'll probably get farther with shouting, so shouting, yeah, I guess. You're a shout kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Three-minute track or five-minute track? I do well at five minutes, but I don't like the five minute long track, so I'll do, I'll go with three minutes. Win hardline or win world champs? Um, I feel like win world champs. Uh, world champs or win rampage? <laughs> this Dude, is you your last question. Some, these this guys the are giving me some big that. thinkers here. Um, <laughs> His appendix just burst. <laughs> 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 I think. I think it's still win the world champs. Um, oh, that's such a hard one. I'd, I'd love to obviously win Rampage. That's a big dream of mine to even go to the event. But um, yeah, I got to go with world champs. All right. And that was this or that. Hey. You win and lose nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you lose an appendix. And people will still invite you to every event that exists. Exa and venue and location. And Some curveballs well. in that. In oh. that, uh, in those questions. Hey, Alonzo, sure. kill the music. Definitely. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just let it go. Just let it run. That was a great one. Yeah. That was good, good job. That's hard. Yeah. There's a few there. Wow, where Where do you get those questions? I wrote Spaghetti all of them. Spaghetti for hair <laughs> or ketchup for tears? You can tell the mountain biker verse Dave once. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got here this morning, and I said, guys, there's way too many mountain bike heavy this or that. So we got to come up with some weird ones. So we sat here. We we did some weird ones. You know, we worked in the Seminuk and the Danny McCaskill yeah. earlier in the conversation. Like so then we could ask you about the mall. I like that one. You know? Yeah. So what's the road to Rampage look like? 
Well, how do you? I don't even know. I think it's pretty flat. Two lanes. <laughs> uh, you can pass <laughs> either way. I don't know. It's virgin, right? So like, <laughs> it's not too gnarly. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't really know exactly because I know it used to be that you could get an invitation through the Proving Grounds tour thing, but um, I'm not sure if that's a way anymore. I think it's just like, you know, random or like, you know, invites kind of to the top guys who they think should be coming or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't really know how to you know, look into how to getting into that. I don't know if it's quite on the it's, it's definitely on the on the bucket list at some point, but I don't think quite yet. In a few years, we'll be yeah. We'll give it another shot, maybe. Have you ridden down there? Like, I know you've been to Rampage. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, I've been to Rampage a bunch. Um, I was able to go actually to the last year's one, and and uh, brought went down with two buddies, and somehow packed three motos into my Tacoma, and uh, we drove down and and just did a big moto trip. So that was pretty sick. But um, yeah, I've ri I've ridden I've ridden along you know some of the old sites and stuff, and so fun, but not not quite the quite to the actual level of uh, what those guys are doing. Mm -hmm. How does the GoPro footage of Hardline uh, live up to it, riding it in real life? Because it looks insane when we're yeah. watching it online. I mean, like, the funny thing with Hardline is that it's it's really hard for, like, getting through the track the first time. And then once you, like, are used to it and, like, you know, figured out all the jumps, it actually becomes a lot easier. Like, still hard to put a race run down, but, like, you know, to get over those those 90-footer jumps the first time is obviously terrifying. And then, you know, once you do it once, it's, like, it's like oh, it's, it's fine to do now because you know the speed, you know the, you know, the feeling of it and stuff like that. So, um, you know, to hit, to tick everything off takes a long time. But then once it's all ticked off, it, it is, uh, you know, a lot easier. But, um, yeah, it's still, still pretty gnarly. Yeah. Well... Can we pull it up real quick? Hardline? One, one last little thing here. Red Bull, Hardline. Jackson, Goldstone. <laughs> we did have a commenter complain about us watching too much stuff, so... Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we banned him, don't worry. Do um, you want to watch the GoPro or the... I, I want to watch the GoPro. Yeah, yeah that okay, one, the GoPro. POV. Yeah. So this is for him. Yeah. Dude, funny thing. I fell off the start gate right at the start, right before I dropped in. Like, okay. I was so far in the back that I like rolled off the back. <laughs> so this is in. This what? was so slippery. What, yeah, where are we? We're, we're in Dife, Dife. No, it's it's, it's Scotland or something or what? It's, Wales. Um, it's Wales. in Wales. It's near Dovey. I think Dovey, that's how right. you say it. But it's yeah, pretty much still middle of nowhere. Like, not much going on, but. Yeah, like that that rock thing there was like pretty slippery up top. This jump was actually pretty chill. Like there's a few little rolls into it and stuff, but this one was really kicky. You had to land good so you carried speed into this. And then landing and hitting the brakes for this was pretty gnarly. Heels down. Dude, dude. it doesn't yeah. look like you're hitting the, the brakes at all. <laughs> well, I mean, this is race run, obviously. So, And then, yeah, you can see right here, right there, see that big rock? Yeah. Fully put me offline. I was like rode basically the top of that corner and somehow was able to, you know, keep together and get a few pedals in, but um, that was kind of the only mistake of the run. Jeez. Had to shift up in the air there. There's a pretty sick angle of me like doing a whip and pedaling and shifting and then just cranking. Oh my that. God, it's so long. Yeah. Wow. I know that uh, rider weight has a lot to do with like uh, how fast you naturally yeah, roll down the sure. hill. Are you still struggling with that versus your competitors? I mean, the, I don't struggle with it at a World Cup because you don't really hit jumps that big, but okay. you definitely could see that some of the heavier guys got over those jumps easier than I did. <laughs> and then, yeah, obviously it's like you go from 90-foot jumps into some crazy janky tech, and then it's like, oh, all of a sudden we're hitting another 60-foot road gap. 60-foot. I don't know exactly. 50, Unofficial no, whatever it is, but it's it's huge. And this is just bonkers. Dude, I would have been at that like second corner by now. <laughs> <laughs> comparison yeah, yeah and I've then this bit right down. here is such a harsh landing that's wow. insane yeah i was like i hadn't hit it that fast in my race room but obviously it was like i was just like letting it letting it loose and giving it everything i got so i was like just yeah is is this a race hard. where you can afford to make a little mistake i mean you can like in sections yes like you can definitely make a mistake you don't want to make a mistake off that jump like yeah, I guess that's what I mean. <laughs> like, like when you said you got knocked there offline. There is places. Earlier. There is places that you can, um, but you know, it's it's not like uh, 
yeah, you can't really get away with everything. How do you feel right now in this in this moment? So in stoked! I, didn't, I had no clue because the timing board or whatever was like mm-hmm. way over in the corner by the crowd. I didn't know where it was, so I had no clue how I finished. I was like, "Am I like, like did I do good or whatever?" And then I was just like, I felt like I had a good one, so I was like, you know, put my arms up and whatever. But um, yeah, I, did, I actually had no clue until like you know another twenty seconds, thirty seconds later how I did. Incredible! W- one more clip if if we have the time. Uh, you mentioned on Tippy's podcast, one of the best moments of your life was following your homies through, I think it was like a fast line. Oh yeah. It was a GoPro clip. Is yeah. it on YouTube? I, it might be. I mean, I know I could find it on Instagram. Mm. Um, was it loose fest? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Loose fest. My first run down loose fest was, yeah, a very memorable, uh, is it is it far on the uh, in the Instagram? If I mean, you could maybe actually go to that Europe edit. It might be in there. That's just a a POV, actually. I mean, yeah. So this is this is me and my buddy Ike class, and this isn't our first run oh down it, but this is one of our first runs down. And, it. and these are or like a like, hundred foot jumps, or yeah, that one's like a hundred and five. <laughs> You're sideways. At that but point, there, do you these, have to do yeah. a whip? <laughs> Honestly, you kind of do. It yeah. gets sketchy if you straight line. Mm. Oh, um, I sense? think this is the first time. Oh no, it's not actually. Never mind. That was too big of a whip. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, look at the see that. That was my first. That was the first one. I was so <laughs> stoked. I just like. So yeah, this. <laughs> yeah. That's um, that's the first first time getting through that line. And what what me and my buddy did was like it was like if we land that one good, just go for the next one. Um. So yeah, we we just. Uh, you know, dropped in, greased the first one. I was following someone. Um, and then Ike, my buddy, was following me. So it was like we landed good off the first one. It was like keep going to the next one. Go to the second one. Go to the third one. Off the big step down. And then, you know, made it all the way to the hip first first go. And and I, I didn't actually know that my buddy Ike behind me was made it through as well. And, I you know, I looked behind me at the after and, you know, I saw that he made it through. And, uh, you know, that was definitely one of the sickest moments ever. That's awesome. And then this is just kind of Audi 9 stuff. I just made a little mashup at it and posted it a long time ago. So you you have a YouTube channel people subs- can subscribe to? Or? Yeah, I do. Um, Not very active on it. Well, what? it's been a been a long time since I've posted. Mm. I, I did, I had like a few vlog things that I put up when I, like kind of during quarantine when I was born. Yeah, I think I watched one of those. Yeah, and the, the first one did really well and it was, you know, really good. But I just kind of, <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of, uh, you know, it's, takes a lot of effort to 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 do oh, yeah. film a vlog so uh yeah i kind of stopped doing it but um yeah is it gonna be a jackson goldstone tv one day the tv show one day i mean i don't think there's, around? there's there's not gonna be a tv show but there is gonna be a little something so i can't say much about it oh. this year but um there me, me and gopro are gonna be putting a little kind of series thing together so very so exciting an eye out for that but um yeah i can't say too much about it oh you said just enough yeah <laughs> just enough <laughs> i'm so teased yeah I can't wait to see, man. Well, this is feeding off each other. Are you well fed, Jackson? I'm fed. I'm full. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ready to get out of here, go find your bike and go to the airport? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Eat some croissants. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's cheeses. supposed to be showing up about now, so we'll see what happens. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is the part of the show where I ask you if you have anything to promote. <laughs> I think you're easy to find on the yeah. internet. People want to, uh, yeah, see what's going on with Jackson Goldstone. Pretty much, pretty much my name is, is, is every handle I've got. So go for it there. Yeah. What's the latest, uh, like video you put out or something that you're proud of? People um, can go watch. I know there's a, this is home. Yeah. I mean, that one's, really that one's a little while ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of the most recent one. I mean, I, Yeah. You can you can find a bunch of stuff that I'm all pretty stuck done, but and endless um, Jackson content. Yeah, there should be something coming out pretty soon as well that uh, that I think you guys will really like. <gasps> I'm, this is this this, this one is, is like I'm I'm really proud of it. So, really? Yeah. Uh, is it, when's it coming? Roughly. I I don't know yet actually. Um, I filmed it with Rupert and uh, hmm. Clay, so some pretty high oh, levels. This was high down level in filmers. New Zealand and yeah. Mexico. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you'll see you'll see, but um, I don't exactly know when the date is on that one. The future. Okay. I won't <laughs> yeah. ask any more questions. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. I know it's been uh, hard to figure out the schedule. So yeah. thanks for dropping by. We really no appreciate problem. it, man. And it's been it awesome cool to, to follow you. <clears throat> Rise to the top. 
And uh, yeah, thanks again for always, you know, being willing to be a part of our s- stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man. Yeah, bro. Uh, yeah, this is uh, feeding off each other. Subscribe. Uh, what else do we say at the end here? Leave a speak pipe if you uh, got one. Yep. Speakpipe.com slash feeding off each other. You know, if you have two minutes one day, or maybe at the airport, you're feeling bored, Jackson, leave us a message, mm-hmm. ask us a question, tell us a joke, speakpipe.com slash feeding off each other. It's just a website. All you got to do is hit the button, talk. Cool. That's it. Yeah, don't let your friend do it. He might screw it up. Okay. <laughs> we shake on it. You leave us a speak pipe. I, I will. Uh, I'll look into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a handshake that's a on pro it. I'll look answer. into it. <laughs> that's a good answer. I'll take it. All right. That's it. And as always... No, 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 That's what we do with the podcast. That's what we do. I don't know. We're done. Episode one, and we haven't stopped. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you for listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Please subscribe for more great podcasts.